but let's talk about kind of what the setup is, kind of what's going on. Essentially what's happened is, is a lot of energy has been hurled at the Earth uh, from the sun. It is our largest collider in the world. Behind me is a place that could be on the verge of solving one of the biggest mysteries in the universe. The most powerful magnetic field that has ever been measured anywhere in the universe has not been able to produce any magnetic monopoles that can be detected. Although numerous calculations of possible phenomena that go beyond the standard model of particle physics predict the existence of these hypothetical particles, more than a century's worth of searching has not produced any evidence that these particles actually exist. Every type of magnet that we are aware of has at least two poles, which are typically referred to as a North Pole and a South Pole, and these poles have opposing magnetic charges. On the other hand, there are models of the universe that postulate the existence of magnetic monopoles, which are particles that have only a North or a South Pole. For instance, the presence of magnetic monopoles would explain why electric charge is quantized, meaning it comes in packets with a minimum size. Researchers have spent the better part of the last century or so looking for magnetic monopoles, but they have not been discovered yet, either in space or in the collisions of particles that take place in particle colliders. However, while researchers at CERN were looking for these monopoles, their experiments produced an entirely unexpected result, which shocked scientists all over the world. So stick around till the end to find out everything there is to know about what one of the experiments at CERN led to. The Large Hadron Collider is currently operating at 6.5 TeV per beam energy. At this energy, trillions of particles circle the 27-kilometre tunnel of the collider 11,245 times per second. Before reaching the LHC, the particles are accelerated in a series of interconnected linear and circular accelerators. Once they reach the maximum speed that one part of the accelerator chain can achieve, they are shot into the next. Without any other force, the particles would drift apart and follow their momentum in a straight line. More than 50 different types of magnets are required to propel them along complex paths without losing speed. All of the magnets on the LHC are electromagnets. The main dipoles produce powerful 8.3 Tesla magnetic fields, which are 100,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. The electromagnets generate the field with a current of 11,080 amperes, and a superconducting coil allows the high currents to flow without losing any energy due to electrical resistance. Thousands of lattice magnets on the LHC bend and tighten the trajectory of the particles. They are in charge of keeping the beam stable and perfectly aligned. Dipole magnets, one of the most complex components of the LHC, are used to bend the particle paths. There are 1,232 main dipoles, each 15 meters long and weighing in at 35 tons. If ordinary magnets were used instead of superconducting magnets in the 27 kilometer long LHC, the accelerator would have to be 120 kilometers long to achieve the same energy. The dipole magnet's powerful magnetic fields enable the beam to handle tighter turns. However, on July 7th, just days after the LHC restarted, researchers were looking for monopoles produced by a proposed phenomenon known as the Schwinger effect, in which extremely powerful magnetic fields could spontaneously produce magnetic particles and their antiparticles. The team employed the most powerful magnetic field ever measured. This magnetic field was produced at LHC when two beams of lead particles were smashed together at extraordinary speeds. This magnetic field measured about 1,016 Tesla, about 2 billion billion times stronger than a typical fridge magnet, or 100,000 times stronger than the magnetic field from a magnetar, a highly magnetized neutron star. Of the searches for magnetic monopoles at accelerators, we are definitely the most sensitive, says Igor Ostrovsky at the University of Alabama. The stronger the magnetic field, the more and the heavier monopoles we can theoretically produce. Nevertheless, the researchers found no monopoles, placing the first strong limits on the mass of these particles. They cannot be less than 70 times the mass of a proton. However, after these experiments, the organization made a rather strange announcement. They stated that they had discovered a fracture that had opened up in the magnetic field of the Earth and that this split remained open for a period of 14 hours. 
Posts were then shared on social media because this happened around the same time as odd things were disclosed, leading some to speculate that CERN was opening a doorway and that something otherworldly would pass through. Although a hole in the Earth's magnetic field did open, scientists say it is nothing to be concerned about. However, the researchers did mention that even while the hole is open, it does allow for the passage of some particularly intense solar winds. For those who are unaware, the Earth's magnetic field is an extremely significant component of our planet that we do not typically discuss, at least not outside of science classes. The magnetic field not only helps humans stay on track by keeping our compass needles pointing north, but it also makes our planets livable by diverting solar winds that would otherwise threaten to deplete the ozone layer. Although the magnetic field is not something that is frequently brought up in conversation, its significance in the upkeep of life as we know it cannot be overstated. NASA scientists believe it is critical to perform additional research on solar winds because the powerful solar mass ejections can damage or destroy Earth orbiting satellites and cause power spikes that can black out entire cities. But how did this crack form? As it turns out, this magnetic field breach was caused by a rare phenomenon known as a co-rotating interaction region from the Sun or CIR. These CIRs are large-scale plasma structures that form when fast-moving and slow-moving streams of solar wind collide in the heliosphere's low and intermediate latitudes. The heliosphere is the space around the Sun that contains the solar magnetic field and solar winds. Coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, are propelled out from the Sun by co-rotating interaction regions. These can contain shock waves in compressed magnetic fields, resulting in turbulent space weather that we see as beautiful aurorae. This one hit the Earth's magnetic field early on July 7th, causing a long-lasting G1 geomagnetic storm. According to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, experts, a coronal mass ejection was embedded in the solar wind ahead of the co-rotating interaction region. Is this crack cause for concern? Experts say there's nothing to worry about because cracks in the Earth's magnetic field are fairly common. This magnetic field acts as a shield protecting us from solar storms. The various fissures in the field are thought to open and close quickly, but recent cracks have shown that they can stay open for several hours at a time. However, something strange has happened recently, with NASA deciding to actively monitor and track an anomaly discovered in the magnetic field. However, the magnetic intensity appears to have decreased, indicating a significant error in the magnetic field, which appears to be substantially less magnetic than it should be. So far, an area spanning South America and Southwest Africa has been affected. For years, scientists have been puzzled by this unusual occurrence known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. The American Space Agency operates a number of satellites and spacecraft in orbit, many of which orbit the Earth. The concern here is that as the magnetic field weakens, we are more vulnerable to charged particles emitted by the Sun. The South Atlantic anomaly has no effect on life on Earth, but it has a significant impact on spacecraft in Earth's orbit. These craft will inevitably pass directly through said anomaly as they circle the planet at low orbit altitudes. Researchers believe that the reduced strength of the Earth's magnetic field during these periods can cause some disruptions in the tech used within these satellites. When they are struck by high energy, particularly charged protons from the Sun, they can short circuit, malfunction and cause a variety of other problems. Scientists recently reported that approximately 17 eruptions were detected in a single area of the Sun, with two of those flares hitting Earth at nearly 2 million miles per hour. One of the most important aspects of understanding the Sun is coronal mass ejections CMEs, and solar flares. Astronomers have good reason to keep a close eye on CMEs, as these eruptions have the potential to cause power outages and disrupt communication networks in a matter of just a few seconds. SpaceX lost 40 satellites a few hours after launch in early 2022 due to a geomagnetic storm. These developments prove the need for astronomers to take precautions. Meanwhile, sunspots have long been known for their powerful magnetic fields and ability to emit radiation known as solar flares. Sunspots are dark spots on the surface of the sun. Because they are cooler than the rest of the sun's surface, they appear dark. A sunspot's temperature, however, remains extremely high, around 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Why are sunspots cool? Because they form in areas with particularly strong magnetic fields. These magnetic fields are so powerful that they prevent some of the sun's heat from reaching the surface. AR2975, one of these sunspots, has recently become quite active. Solar flares typically take 15 to 18 hours to reach Earth. However, a powerful solar storm was recently produced by a strong wave produced by a fast-moving flare which overtook a slower flare. The magnetic storm that resulted from this event produced a stunning natural display of lights known as the Northern Lights. When the magnetic storm hit the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere, these lights formed. This light show was visible from the northern states to Iowa and Oregon. This solar storm produced stunning views, but larger solar storms can cause massive damage. G3 storms, according to the SWPC, can cause radio navigation problems at low frequencies as well as intermittent satellite navigation problems. Scientists have even predicted that a massive G3 storm could knock out the global internet. The largest solar storm ever witnessed, according to scientists, occurred in 1859 during the Carrington event, when a storm of solar particles damaged telegraph systems around the world and caused auroras brighter than the full moon. Because these events produced genuinely beautiful views, the destruction is not worth it, and scientists still have a long way to go in investigating these events. Should CERN, however, exercise caution in the future with their experiments? Please let us know in the comments section below.